Welcome to Trinidad and Tobago and to the biggest party in the universe. Tonight, one of 84 delegates will walk away with my crown. Live from Trinidad and Tobago, the 48th annual Miss Universe pageant. this year is going to prove to be tougher than ever. 84 crown jewels from around the world and only one gets to actually wear the crown. Let's meet them now. Angola, Egidia Torres. Argentina, Elena Fornia. Aruba, Irina Cruz. Australia, Michelle Shedd. Katia Gieter. Bahamas, Glenis No. Barbados, Olivia Harding. Belgium, Tanya Dexter. Belize, Viola Jeffrey. Bolivia, Susana Barrientos. Botswana, Impule Quelacobi. Brazil, Enata Fun. British Virgin Islands, Movell Lewis. Canada, Shannon MacArthur. Andrea Munoz Cesarego. Colombia, Marianella Manfazzini. Cook Island, Tina Marie Vogel. Costa Rica, Ariana Bolaños. Croatia, Mariana Kujina. Kiritao, Shiren Ricardo. Cyprus, Valentina Dionisio. Czech Republic, Petra Faltinova. Dominican Republic, Luz Garcia. Ecuador, Carolina Alfonso. Egypt, Angie Abdallah. El Salvador, Cynthia De Villa. Estonia, Trin Rana. Finland, Vanessa Forsman. France, Mariba Galantere. Germany, Diana Trubig. Ghana, Akuba Kujo. Great Britain, Cherie Pisani. Sophia Raptis. Guatemala, Monica Panedo. Guyana, 
Vardinia Sober. Honduras, Sofia Guerrero. Hong Kong, Anne Hem. Hungary, Annette Godami. India, Gul Pana. All of them are beautiful. They wouldn't be here if they weren't. It takes more than great looks to be first at this finish line. That is for sure, Allie. And right now, more music, more color, more party. Let's meet the rest of our Miss Universe delegates. Ireland, Vivian Doyle. Israel, Herana Roslan. Italy, Gloria Bellicchi. Jamaica, Nicole Hutton. Japan, Satomi Ogawa. Korea, Jian Choi. Lebanon, Clemence Ashkar. Malaysia, Jeanette Oi. Malta, Dorian Muscat. Mauritius, Micaela Lautal. Mexico, Silvia Delgado. Namibia, Vanda Kashwangwa. New Zealand, Christy Wilson. Nicaragua, Liliana Vilarte. Northern Marianas, Sherlyn Cabrera. Panama, Yomani Saye. Paraguay, Carmen Morinigo. Peru, Fabiola Lazo. Philippines, Miriam Kimbao. Poland, Catalina Bacua. Marisa Ferreira. Puerto Rico, Brenda Liz Lopez. Russia, Alexandra Petrova. Singapore, Cheryl Cadero. Slovak Republic, Anita Kuklova. South Africa, Sonia Rasiti. Diana Nogarida. <laughs> Suriname, Serafia Nico. Sweden, Emma Helena Nielsen. Switzerland, Sonia Grandjean. Taiwan, Republic of China. Wong Wong Fei. Thailand, Apisamai Sirangsang. Trinidad and Tobago, Nicole Simone Dyer. Turkey, Osnur Dursun. Turks and Caicos, Chantal Stubbs. Ukraine, Jana Pikula. Uruguay, Veronica Gonzalez. USA, Kimberly Tesler. US Virgin Islands, Sharice Smith. Venezuela, Carolina Indriago. Yugoslavia, Anna Karic. Zambia, Isanju Kaldopa.
48th annual Miss Universe pageant. Welcome back to the 48th annual Miss Universe pageant on CBS, where all 84 delegates are decked out in exclusive designs by Diane von Furstenberg. Over the past few days, a different panel of judges interviewed the delegates. They were then judged in their swimsuits and evening gowns in a presentation show. Now right here are the choices that that panel made for the final top 10. These are in random order. The first position goes to Spain. Spain's Deanna Nogueda is a model and budding scientist who recently completed her internship in pathological anatomy. Mexico's Sylvia Salgado is going for a bachelor's in business administration and plans to get a master's in language. Jamaica! Jamaica's Nicole Houghton holds a degree in international relations and management and is a former television host on her island. Puerto Rico! Puerto Rico's Brenda Liz Lopez is a model pursuing a degree in business administration with the hopes of starting her own modeling agency. The fifth position and halfway through the Philippines. Philippines' Miriam Kiandao is a licensed physical therapist who plans to seek a PhD and dreams of launching her own clinic. Kuju is studying her degree in business technology and plans to own an architectural firm. Botswana! Botswana and Kulik Kilabobi, our very first delegate from Botswana, is a model who's planning to get a degree in electronic engineering. Three spots left. The A spot goes to South Africa. South Africa's Sonia Rassiti holds a diploma in junior primary education and wants an advanced degree to help educa educate underprivileged children. India. India's Gul Penang is a model studying for a career in international trade and finance. Now the 10th and final spot, the quest for the 1999 Miss Universe pageant goes to Venezuela! Venezuela's Carolina Indriago is a model and actress who's going for a degree in civil engineering. There they are, 10 reasons we're glad to be in Trinidad and Tobago tonight. Julian Alley, any surprises up there? Well, Jack, yeah, there's some surprise ones. The obvious one, Allie, is Trinidad and Tobago. She was a great competitor. She was very strong throughout the competition, and I think the audience is a little disappointed. But 
on the good hand is that India did make it, and there's 45% of their community in Trinidad and Tobago is India. And of course, the uh, Miss USA did not make it. This has got to be the first time in like 15 years, 15 years that Miss USA very long didn't time. make it. I think it is a great top 10. It's a great top 10. Now the girls, all the girls are going to one room, right? The top That's 10. Right. They the are. And you know, out. <laughs> language is a problem here because they don't all speak the same language. But I don't think they're I don't worried think they're about talking that. anyway. No, okay, what you need to know out. is the judges and the audience can't hear us, so we're going to dish up here, and you just never know what we're going to say. For Back now. to you, Jack. Right now, the scores for the ten finalists are all at zero. That's right. All the scores from the preliminary judging have been erased. And tonight, judges start with a clean slate. So let's meet the people who hold the delegates' fate and those scoring buttons in their hands. And please hold your applause until we're finished. Thank you. Actress, racehorse breeder, and fashion model Kylie Bax. One of the world's foremost photographers, Patrick DeMarchelet. Fashion model and international runway star, Melania Knauss. Former ambassador to Trinidad and Tobago, now chairman and CEO of the Empire State Development Corporation, Charles A. Gargano. Top Manhattan restaurant tour, the brains, energy, and passion behind Le Cirque, Cereal Maccioni. The world's first male supermodel, Marcus Schenkenberg. One of the NFL's all-time greats from the Buffalo Bills, Bruce Smith. Senior editor of Sports Illustrated and the woman in charge of the swimsuit edition, Diane Smith. Another one of the world's supermodels, the face of Victoria's Secret, Stephanie Seymour. The only man besides Muhammad Ali to be a three-time heavyweight champion boxer of the world, Evander Holyfield. Thank you again for being with us. Now we're going to take a little breather here because we're going to make pan. Take a look and listen to the sound that makes Trinidad and Tobago like no other island in the world. Trinidad, you're gonna catch pan fever. Mm-hmm. If anything says island bit, it is this incredible steel drum. They were invented by Trinidadians back in the 30s and 40s when old old drums were just lying around turning to rust. But some very resourceful Trinis had sticks in their hands and rhythm in their souls. Those bat jumps, as they were called, started banging out a bit on throwaway junk that now has the respectable title of the only acoustic musical instrument invented in the 20th century. It's pan fever and there is no cure. A guy comes up to me and says, I can bowl over a maiden with five flippers and a googly? I think to myself, is that a weird pickup line or what? But wait, he was talking about the most popular game in the English-speaking Caribbean. Cricket is a little like American baseball, but baseball has pitchers and batters. Cricket has bowlers and batsmen, and now bats women. Baseball has bases and sliders. Cricket has wickets and googlies, and a hundred runs is a century, which is not how long it takes to play a match, although it can go on for days. The West Indies cricket team, with its Trini captain, the world's best batsman, is the pride of the island. Well, now I have the lingo down, and um, I love the clothes. Yeah! Welcome back to the CBS presentation of the 48th Annual Miss Universe pageant. The judges are ready. But there's something that I want you to know at home. The highest and the lowest scores for each delegate in each of the categories will not count. What's left will be averaged to give the delegates scores. Now the competition is going to begin with what we call the world tour. We paired each delegate with another. She had to learn everything about the other delegate's country. And because of the language barriers, barriers, you can imagine how tough that is, so they had to be very creative and create their own ways to communicate. So let's see how they did. Spain. There you are. So Spain gave up her siesta to discover the culture of Taiwan. Can you tell me how they dance in Taiwan and could you possibly show us? ¿Nos puedes contar cómo es que bailan en Taiwán y podrías hacernos una demostración? Sí, cómo no. 
En, es un baile sobre todo que mueve, es muy lento, es muy diferente al español y mueve sobre todo las manos con unas varas y unas cintas. Yo os lo puedo bailar. The, their dancing is very different from ours. It's much slower and above all they make a lot of hand movements and they use like these uh, special rods and ribbons and if you'd like I'd be glad to show you. Absolutely. Yeah. Very much. Thank you very much. Take your mark over there. Thank you. Spain. Mexico, left Central America for the exotic culture of India. How are you? Good. Fine, thank you. Good. Now, Mexican food and Indian food are both notoriously spicy, right? Yeah. So what do they do for heartburn in India? Well, they have this thing called roti and curry, and it's a, it's a sauce uh, with a tortilla. It's similar to Mexico. In Mexico, we have this tortilla, and that's the curry, and the roti, it's the salt. It's pretty good, though. Oh, I'm getting heartburn just listening to it, no, but it sounds no, no. good. No, it's great. It's great. You should taste it. So what did you learn about the men in India? The men, oh, well, I, mean, I learned that men are really respect in India. It's the, the highest uh, position. And, uh, well, family is very important for them. Well, that's very good to learn. What's the greatest similarity, would you say, between your country and India? The greatest what? Sorry? The greatest similarity. What, what, what is uh, very similar, close, close related? Well, I find that moral values are very important in you, India as well as in Mexico. So I think that's a big similarity. Thank you. Okay, before going, I just say, Miranam Silvia e Mexico. Jamaica got the dish on pasta, teaming up with Italy. Yes. Oh, this would be good. Very good. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Now, if you met a guy in Italy who didn't speak a word of English, how would you ask him out on a date? And can you show us with body language if possible? Well, first of all, I'd say ciao, buongiorno, como estai? And hopefully he'd say buena, grazie. And then I would just say, you know, you know, let's go to the movies. <laughs> <laughs> now, you're uh, a certified aerobics instructor, yes. right? What did you learn about fitness in, in Italy? Well, definitely in Italy, they're very fitness conscious. You see, um, it's very important to them to look very good because we know Italy is the fashion capital of the world. And so they definitely do go to the gym regularly. And my particular partner, Gloria Bellici, she swims a lot. Oh, that's good fitness for sure. Now, how, how would you say, hey, mom, in Italy? Well, I don't know how to say a man, but I know how to say no problem, because in Jamaica we say that all the time, no problem, man, and it's nunche problema. Thank you very much. Jamaica. <laughs> Puerto Rico might be ready to ski the Alps, and she was paired with Switzerland. Hello. Hello, good evening. How are you? Now, if you were going to Switzerland tomorrow, what three things would you pack first? For Switzerland? Yes. Mm -hmm. A big coat, skis, and a big bag to fill it with chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you were going to go on a date with a Swiss guy, okay, is it okay to kiss on the first date in Switzerland? Well... Maybe for Switzerland it's okay, yes, it is okay over there, but not for me. That's not part of my value, so I will not kiss the guy on the first date. Sí. What if he brought you a big bag of chocolates? Well, I'll think it for the next date. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Puerto Rico. Thank you. Puerto Rico. Philippines got a lesson on South America from our delegate from Guatemala. Hello. Hello, Jack. So now I understand that you love to sing and dance in the Philippines. Did you learn any Guatemalan songs? 
I did not learn any Guatemalan songs because most Guatemalans, uh, Guatemalan music are mostly instrumental. I learned about their uh, instrument though, which is called marimba. It's like a xylophone, and um, it tells. They also named marimba as a dance in the, in oh. Guatemala. So it's also an instrument and a dance. And a dance. I see. Now, you say that women are very modest in the Philippines. How would they compare to the women in Guatemala? Are they also very modest? Well, basically, we have the same uh, culture as in Guatemala because we both have been colonized by the Spaniards. And uh, basically, we are both conservative when it comes to, uh, to how women carry themselves. Right, I see. I know something about you, that you like to watch TV, don't you? Yes. Okay, now, what, what do you think you'd see in Guatemala if you were watching TV? Oh, if I would be watching TV, maybe perhaps they would have a Discovery Channel there. And if if Discovery Channel would feature Guatemala, I would like to learn more about Guatemala. I love that channel and the lions. I love all <laughs> yes. that. Okay. Philippines, thank, thank you. you. I tell you what, these girls right I'm here. They're they're hot to trot. They are hot. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take another look at the first five of our top ten delegates. 24-year-old Diana Nojera of Spain works as a model, has just completed an internship in pathological anatomy, and would like to be a lab technician. She's also a champion swimmer and badminton player who loves merengue, disco dancing, skiing, and volleyball. 20-year-old Silvia Salgado took a year off from school to fulfill her delegate responsibilities in Mexico. She's currently pursuing her degree in business administration and will later try for a master's in languages with hopes of opening a school for languages. Jamaica's Nicole Houghton holds a bachelor's degree in international relations and management. This 24-year-old is fluent in English and French, manages the family pharmacy, loves to cook vegetarian dishes, and is a certified aerobics instructor. She's also the former host of Smile Jamaica. 23-year-old Brenda Lees Lopez stays in shape by running on the treadmill, acting, and modeling. She also loves to visit her Puerto Rico homeland's rainforest. Brenda is going for a degree in business administration in order to open her own modeling agency and is very proud that she helped her mother buy her own home. Miriam Kiambo of the Philippines is 23 and a licensed physical therapist who creates special exercises for her patients. She wants to go for a doctorate in physical therapy in order to own and operate her own clinic. Her only regret is that her work schedule cuts into her exercise routine. Puerto Rico is in the lead right now, but anything, anything can, can happen. happen now. And the singer who's setting the world on fire, Julio Iglesias Jr., is coming up later. And the World Tour competition continues right after this. Hi, and welcome to the best view of Trinidad. Hi, Mom! This is the Moko Jumbi. Moko is a West Indian word for make-believe, and Jumbi means ghost. So a Moko Jumbi is really a dancing carnival spirit who towers above the crowd on 10 to 15 foot stilts. Although it looks like a walk in the park, performing this traditional folk character can really keep you on your toes. You have to start young if you want to master this art. Man, this is tough. These things have no knees. Now I want everyone to call me your highness. Welcome back to the land of Soka, land of Limbo, land of the Carnival, and right now the land of the 48th Annual Miss Universe pageant right here on CBS. And if you're just joining us, here are the top ten. Spain, Mexico, Jamaica, Puerto Rico, Philippines, Ghana, Botswana, South Africa, India, Venezuela. Now, if for some reason a judge does not vote, scores are averaged by the number of judges that did vote. Okay, now we're in the middle of our world tour where the delegates are learning the ABCs of another delegate's country. And by the way, the interpreters, for those of them who need them, are provided by the Professional Translating Services, Inc. Ghana, 
Now she moves from the African shores over to the island of Aruba. Have a seat, please. Thank you. So, big question. How do you handle a bad hair day in Aruba? Well, Aruba is really humid, so you can't have a bad hair day. Uh, my partner, Irina, she usually just blow dries her hair. <laughs> you ever get windy over there and it goes crazy on her? Not really, but she takes good care of her hair. She's a synchronized swimmer, so she uses a lot of moisturizing, and she blow dries it when it gets humid and wet. Got it. Is it okay for a woman to ask a man out on a date in Aruba? Oh, definitely. Think? Aruba is a big tourist sport, so they're really open-minded, and Irina is just a go-getter, so I'm sure she's done that several times. <laughs> I'll have to talk to her later about that, huh? Now, you're both from countries with beaches. Now, who would you say, in your opinion, has sexier swimming suits? Um, definitely Aruba. Ghanaians tend to be a little discreet, so we go for the one-piece, and Irina goes for the two-piece swimsuit. <laughs> Uh-oh, we'll talk yeah. to her about that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ghana. continents came together as Botswana was paired with Brazil. Hello. Hi, Jack. Now, your favorite place in Botswana described as Africa's last Eden, correct? Where is Brazil's, would you say, last Eden? Um, well, I think the place where Brazil has wishes are naturally destroyed has to be the Amazon jungle. Um, the reason why I chose the Okavango Delta as my favorite place is because it's very natural and it's undestroyed. And I think the Amazon jungle probably has the same thing. See. Now, if, if you want to bring more tourism to Botswana, what tips would you pick up from Brazil? Ooh. Tourism. How do you get people over there? How do you get people there? Yeah. Oh, well, I tell them about the beauty of the place. I think Botswana is one of the most beautiful countries in the world. Um, it's very peaceful. It's very relaxed. Uh, when you're there, you really feel as if you're in paradise. Right. What do you do for fun? In Botswana? Yeah. You go to your cattle post. It is known that every Botswana has a cattle post full of cattle. So that's where you go. Okay. <laughs> Botswana. <laughs> Africa. Learned about Central America thanks to a delegate from Honduras. Hello. Hi, hello. Now, you don't speak Spanish, and our delegate from Honduras doesn't speak English. So tell us, we're all very curious how you communicated. To be honest, we used our hands a lot. <laughs> um, we managed to communicate. Um, I, because I'm a little bit Italian, I could understand slightly, a slight bit of knowledge in Spanish, but not much, not much. I know how to say hello. And I'm to say thank you. Well, let's hear it. How do you do it? Hola and gracias. Beautiful. I actually even knew that. <laughs> <clears throat> now, you say that you're not a feminist but believe in equal rights. Have yes. women in Honduras, in your opinion, achieved equal rights? Oh, absolutely. Definitely. Um, I believe nowadays we're living in a modern society um, and Honduras is a very modern country. So, uh, definitely. Oh, good. That's something that we all strive for. What would you say the most fascinating thing off the top of your head you learned about Honduras? Well, because I'm from South Africa, and of course we have our beautiful Golden Mile Beach front, I'd have to say the beach. Beautiful. Thank you very much, <laughs> South Thank Africa. You. The delegate from India spent her world tour in Mexico. So, what can you do in Mexico that you would get in trouble doing in India? Drive on the right-hand side of the road. <laughs> because... Because back home in India, we drive on the left-hand side of the road. Right. That, that would cause a problem, oh, wouldn't yes, it? Oh, yes. Definitely. Right. Also in Los Angeles, would be a problem, too. Now, you want a gold medal for debating. Very interesting. What hot topic did you and Mexico debate? Well, uh, what we did debate about was the position of women and what the social revolution has, which has overtaken Mexico, and how the position of women has really improved. But what we did actually, the, the topic of debate was that whether this, <laughs> this revolution occurred earlier in India or earlier in Mexico. Oh. And I conceded defeat. I see. <laughs> did it ever come to blows? Because if no. you need some help, Evander can help you over here. <laughs> No? Okay. No, I didn't come to that. <laughs> India, thank you very thank much. Thank you. 
South America's Venezuela took an imaginary trip to Ireland. Now, we notice your colorful outfits for the past three weeks. How would you dress differently if you were in Ireland? Hemos notado que en las últimas tres semanas te has puesto unos trajes muy coloridos. ¿Te vestirías en forma distinta si fueras a Irlanda? Pues no, siempre mantengo mi personalidad. En Irlanda o en Venezuela me vestiría igual porque quiero sentirme cómoda y de esa manera me siento cómoda y me gusta. Well, no, I wouldn't because I would always be true to my personality, so I dress the same whether I was in Ireland or in Venezuela. I like to feel comfortable, so that's what I do. Yeah. Now tell me, besides the weather, what's the biggest difference between your country and Ireland? Además del tiempo, del clima, ¿cuál es la diferencia más grande entre tu país e Irlanda? No le veo mucha diferencia. Irlanda, al igual que Venezuela, tiene muchos paisajes naturales porque es un país bien cálido, bien frío. Y por esa lluvia hay mucha vegetación. Además la gente es amistosa, es amorosa como en Venezuela. Así que mejor le encuentro en la cosa positiva y no le busco defectos. I think that really they're not that different because of the fact that both countries have both warm climates and uh, cold climates, which gives them different types of scenery. In addition to that, I think that the people are both very warm in both countries, very warm-hearted. So I think I'd rather look for the positive uh, similarities rather than look for differences. Very good. Venezuela. What a strong second half. Yeah, I like a healthy competition. These girls are great. Another look at the five delegates we just saw. Ghana Zakuba Kuju is 19 and following her father's footsteps by pursuing a degree in building technology. She wants to one day own an architectural firm and also enjoys writing stories, swimming, and playing badminton. Akuba is especially proud of launching a healthcare organization for women and children. 19-year-old Mpuli Kuilagobi is the very first delegate from Botswana in the history of the pageant. She's a model pursuing a career in electronic engineering and was captain of her netball team, Africa's leading female sport. She was also voted best sportswoman of the year. Sonia Rasidi is 21 and has been singing since she could talk and ballet dancing since she could walk. A member of South Africa's Youth National Choir, she also plays guitar and is a teacher. Her goal is to get an advanced degree in order to promote education in rural communities. 20-year-old Gul Kanag loves the film studios known as Bollywood in her native India. She's balancing a modeling career with studies in math, economics, and political science and wants a career in international trade. But she wouldn't turn down a career on the screen either. And believe it or not, she's also ridden an ostrich. Carolina Indriago is very proud of being the first delegate of color from Venezuela. This 18-year-old civil engineering student would eventually like to become an actress. She could be a swashbuckler because she's a fencing champion too, winning Venezuela's finals despite a broken ankle. You know what? We are really curious to see what the judges think, so I want to take a look at the scores. Let's Can we look do at that? Them. All right. Come. Wow. Look at this. You know what, It's tight. I knew it was going to be tight. I could not agree with the judging more. I love these three girls. I do, too. I think they were neck and neck, and they were right on the money. I, I love to some of the comments, though. Not only are they beautiful, but they were very intelligent and answered their questions superbly. And that's the key. you got to be able to talk. That's right. All right, Jack, we're going to throw it back down to you. Diane Smith is the woman in charge of Sports Illustrated Swimsuit Edition. So, I want to talk to Diane for a second. Diane, now, all of the delegates are very beautiful and they look tremendous in swimsuits. So, what exactly sets one apart from the other? What are you looking for? Well, we uh, all have, they all have fit, gorgeous, healthy bodies, but we're looking for the, the one that really has grace under pressure. I mean, they're in front of millions of people in these swimsuits, so that's a tough job. We're keep an eye on them. Exactly, from the woman who knows. Okay, the swimsuit competition is coming up soon, but first, a preview with spectacular views from Trinidad and Tobago in the background. The dele delegates are in Oscar de la Renta swimwear, and the music is from Hot Trini Soka star David Rudder, our 1999 Miss Universe swimsuit video.
from every corner in Trinidad. The whole world knows Trinidad as the birthplace of carnival. And in most camps, people work year-round to produce these drop-dead gorgeous costumes for the annual two-day masquerade. Hey, let's play moss. And if we're dressed to kill, then the Queen's Park Savannah is dressed to thrill with stately historic mansions that line the park like royalty themselves. Oh, and don't get me started on food. Crack a coconut, bite into a roti, savor a doubles, or shuck an oyster. The whole place is a calypso for the taste buds. Yes, welcome back to the Miss Universe party on CBS. Now just try to imagine Mardi Gras, New Year's Eve, the Super Bowl and the World Cup all rolled into one and you just might have an idea of what Carnival means in Trinidad and Tobago. We're going to let our special tour guide show you. It's off the Carnival with the current Miss Universe, Trinidad and Tobago's own Wendy Fitzwilliam. Madness. Magic. Welcome to my Carnival. Watch, listen, and let the spirit move you. Carnival was born in the days when plantation owners had one last fling before Lent. Meanwhile, the sugar workers celebrated the cane harvest with can brulee. The two festivals merged and moved to the streets with singing, dancing, drumming, and good times. Carnival literally means farewell to the flesh, but we'll leave the interpretation entirely up to you. Today, it's Trinidad and Tobago's national event, with every part of the population jumping up and celebrating Japan and Calypso, highlighted by the competitions where elaborate bands try to outdo each other in costumes as wild and free as their imagination. Even the children take part. Carnival Saturday belongs to them, as little masqueraders of the future deck themselves out in costumes just as fancy as the adults. So be a minstrel, be a devil, join the rebel. Anything goes, including the clothes. Wear a hundred pounds of costume or next to nothing at all. Party hearty, sing and dance, take a chance. Come to Carnival and come to life. Nobody can top Trinidad Carnival, but we're going to try. Mix swimsuits, liming and limbo, and you set the stage on fire. With shoes by Sasha London Footwear, ladies and gentlemen, the 1999 Oscar de la Renta Swimsuit Competition.
there. Jack it is oh blazing God. down there. How her hair did not catch on fire, I, I don't know. That bar was, was 12 inches from the floor. How, how did she do that? We you know no what? Idea. And the guys on the stilt, I thought, I, mean, I think one of them fell in rehearsal or something. I know, but what's amazing, wow. we have a great swimsuit competition. We do. But what I have to say is, there's not as much emphasis on, on breasts. As Miss USA, I, ha I have to say it. <laughs> well, you know, I'm sure they've had other work done. Let's just put it that way. Oh my way. gosh. Okay. Now, coming up in a few moments, the winner of the swimsuit competition. But first, the place to get away from it all. Welcome to the islands of Robinson Crusoe. Here's all you need to know in a coconut shell. Only 21 miles separate Tobago from Trinidad, but it might as well be a universe. Trinidad Beat is hurry up, Tobago Beat is slow down. Trinidad is jump up and shout, Tobago is lie down and whisper. Get away from it all on a beautiful quiet beach or hike through the oldest legally protected forest in the world dating back to 1776. Hang out at Spaceside Village with a restaurant and a tree and a view to die for. How about a day at the races? In Spain, they run with the bulls, but here they run with the goats and the crabs. And talk about a perfect place for a wedding. Just a three-day residence makes it legal to get married. And you can stay right here for a honey of a honeymoon. The view from Fort King George is filled with beauty and history. And it's just one of the reasons why more countries fought over Tobago than any other Caribbean island. Got coconut milk? Welcome back to the 48th annual Miss Universe pageant on CBS. We're about to find out the winner of the swimsuit competition. I think it's coming up. The winner is, yes, of the Oscar de la Renta swimsuit competition and a $5,000 modeling contract in Spain. Oh, I Here thought she, she was is. terrific. Absolutely beautiful. You know, Julie, let's see who, let's, oh, wow. here we go. Oh, my goodness. Close. You know what? This competition is so hot right now. Look. There's a tie. and South Africa are tied for second. And look, and you know, a tenth of a point between. Oh, oh wow. Gosh. And you so know what? Close. In my opinion, the judges are right, right on the money. Right on the money. Good job, judges. Yeah, we, we think you're doing a good job. All right, we're going to throw it back down to Jack. Thank you, ladies. So who's ever lucky enough to be crowned Miss Universe will take home a lot of other prizes, too. Once again, here's Wendy Fitzwilliam to show you. Herbal Essences awards Miss Universe $10,000 and an assortment of shampoos, conditioners, stylers, body wash, and facial care with blends of all natural botanicals and organic herbs in pure mountain spring water. Clairol Herbal Essences, a totally organic experience. Miss Universe receives a $10,000 scholarship from Oscar de la Renta Swimwear, the official swimwear of the Miss Universe pageant. Oscar de la Renta Swimwear is proud to be the sponsor of tonight's swimsuit competition. Hawaiian Tropic Sun Care Products awards Miss Universe $2,500 in cash, products, and apparel. Enhanced with natural flora, fruit, and nut extracts, Hawaiian Tropic offers sun care for every skin type. Be sun smart with Hawaiian Tropic. Speedo will award Miss Universe with an active wear wardrobe. Head to your local authentic fitness store to check out the latest active wear fashions or visit us at our website, www.speedo.com. The fastest way to shop. Speedo. Dreams that winners are made of. Hanes Hosiery, the official legwear of the Miss Universe pageant, awards Miss Universe with $5,000 in luxurious Hanes Silk Reflections Hosiery in a variety of styles and colors. She'll have great legs for every occasion. Nikimoto, the originator of the cultured pearl since 1893 and the official jeweler of the Miss Universe pageant, proudly presents this year's winner with a radiant cultured pearl necklace and earrings. Miss Universe receives $5,000 and a fabulous array of exclamation. Three fragrances to wear for irresistible flair. Anytime, anywhere. Exclamation, the official fragrance of tonight's pageant. From Sasha London, a collection of contemporary footwear especially for you. Remember, style breeds success. Andiamo Luggage, made in the USA, the official luggage of the Miss Universe pageant. Frequent Traveler Top. $10,000 worth of spree prepaid phone cards from Sprint make it easy and convenient for Miss Universe to go on a calling spree. No coins, no bills, no problems. Spree, the prepaid phone card with great connections.
Okay, now, we've talked to Diane about swimwear right now. We're gonna get into a little conversation with a few of the judges about the evening gown. So we're gonna start with Stephanie Seymour here. Now, Stephanie, you're a very famous model. I'm sure you've even probably modeled a lot of gowns like this. So what exactly are you looking for here in the competition? Uh, I'm looking for a young lady with uh, class and poise and personal style. Very good. I'm sure it's going to be right up there. Now, we've heard a woman's point of view. I'm going to get a man's point of view now, a real man. Evander Holyfield, just curious. What are you looking for in the evening gown competition tonight? Well, uh, you know, uh, confidence. You know, a woman that have confidence is going to show. Excellent. Thank you, too. All right. We'll be back with the evening gown competition and Julio Iglesias Jr. right after this. Trinidad and Tobago, it's a world that whispers elegance and style, and we're going to put it together with the smooth sound of international superstar Julio Iglesias Jr. for the 1999 Evening Gown Competition. Woo!
is why Trinidad and Tobago are truly the treasure islands tonight. Julie, Allie, which one of the gowns would you like to wear? They are beautiful. They're stunning. This is what I can't wait to watch this for And what we changed for you as well. Yeah, yes, we did. You know, I have to say this. I don't know if I'm right, but the Latin countries just have a sexy way of walking, don't they? Julie, I think that they are very comfortable with their sexuality, like yeah. all women should be. <laughs> right? That's right. Yeah. And I think the gowns here are less constricted right. and beaded than Miss USA, don't you? I oh, think they wow, the Spain. And the Philippines Same again. Wow, Philippines Venezuela. Behind them. I tell you, we've got a horse race going on here, like I a have... tight competition. It's great. You know what? I have to make a little comment. Venezuela is in white again this yes. year. It is a tradition of theirs that usually they put their girls they wear in white. white. Yeah, I've noticed Very that. Very interesting fact. Okay, which five do you think will make the top five? We're going to continue on and find out if you're right when we come back. comes from every corner of the world. Trinidad has been called the rainbow country for its brilliantly colored flowers and its multicultured, multi-religioned rainbow of people. One of the brightest colors in the rainbow is the heritage of India. The temple in the sea boasts the beauty of Indian dancers. Diwali is a Hindu celebration of peace and goodwill held once a year with pageants of song and dance. The highlight is the Festival of Lights, which turns the islands into glittering jewels as thousands of oil lamps are lit at dusk and strung along the walls, gardens, windowsills and bamboo arches. The spectacular festival shines for every colour of the rainbow on these sparkling islands in the sea. continue to shine for just five women who will continue their quest for the title of Miss Universe 1999. The five finalists in random order. South Africa. for the birds. Really? You can listen to them chirp, cheep and coo all through the Asa Wright Nature Center where the birds' names are as beautiful as their colors. Bearded bellbirds, tufted coquettes, honey creepers, hummingbirds, tenandras and toucans. And you know that old saying, red sky at night, sailors delight, well the sailors are happy as clams at the Karani Sanctuary where every day at sunset the scarlet ibis come home to roost and turn the sky bright red. 
and you can swim to the island beach, throw on some scuba gear and dive Tobago's underwater reef to see the biggest brain coral in the world. Or dance a wet calypso with giant manta rays with 10 feet wingspan, just like the birds moving their wings to that infectious island beach. Welcome back. Now, no matter what language they speak, the delegates have to think on their feet when it comes to media interviews. In this part of the competition, we'll find out if they have what it takes. South Africa. Roden Island, where President Nelson Mandela was in prison for so many years, is now a tourist attraction. Tell me, how do you feel about that? I think it's absolutely fabulous, as um, Robben Island has a lot of history of which we can show South Africa, we can show the rest of the world that we can live together in a united nation if we choose to. Thank you. Now tell me, what myth about your country would you like to wipe out? Well, South Africa has a lot of history, as I was saying, and I wouldn't say that there is anything I would want to wipe out because it is a historical past in South Africa. So the myths and legends that are there, I would like them to remain there. Thank you very much. South Africa, step right back here. Julie, you know what? I have to say that I don't know if she was really rehearsed or she just really knew her stuff. I felt like she was rehearsed. When she said thank you at the end, it's, I felt like that was, was what she thought she should do. Let's see what the judges thought. Uh, let's go back to Jack and delegate number two. Venezuela. You're the first Miss Venezuela of color, and you say some people weren't happy about that. How did you get them to look past your color? Venezuela, tú has dicho que tú eres la primera Miss Venezuela que es de color y que hubo personas que no se sintieron satisfechas con eso. ¿Qué haces tú para que vean quién eres tú de verdad y no se fijen en tu color? Pues siempre he pensado que la belleza es interna y no es externa. Y quiero y le demuestro a la gente simplemente como es Carolina Indriago, conversando con ellos, siendo no mis Venezuela, en donde quiera que me pare, sigo siendo la misma. Les demuestro cariño, hablo con la gente, les sonrío cada vez que puedo. I've always thought that beauty is internal and not external. So what I do is I always try to be who I am, Carolina Indriago, in the way that I speak to people, in being warm-hearted with them, and that's the way that I do it. Venezuela. You know, I have to say, Venezuelans are known to be hard, cold competitors. But this girl, she seems warm to me. Uh, she's very she's sweet. I think so. Her. And she's she's only 19. She's very one of our youngest contestants. I like her a lot. I do too. Let's go back to Jack and delegate number three. You're the first delegate in the history of Miss Universe from Botswana. Now, aside from that, how would you like to be remembered? Um, I'd like to be remembered as a pioneer for young women. Um, I was also one only one girl in my class in electronics. And I think I want to be remembered as a pioneer in the sense that I paved way for young women, both in my country and throughout the world. You said that you'd like to be the first female president of your country. What would you do differently than the president of the United States? Oh, <laughs> a lot. Well, first thing is, um, I know that if I was president, I would definitely make education compulsory, especially in my countries where you get in rural areas, some people not going to school or starting school late. And I think if I was president, uh, they also have to make compulsory. But I think even the president of the United States caters for that as well. Thank you very much. Baswan, step right back up here. She's so cute. I think she's adorable. And she's only 19 as well. I feel really? like she's like 28 or 30 you know, years like, old. What could have been a very controversial answer, or very risky answer, she pulled it off great. I think Went she with did. education. All right, Jack, delegate number four, let's hear what she has to say. Now, you would like to be a medical lab technician. What medical discovery would you like to make? Eh, tú quisieras ser eh, técnico de laboratorio. ¿Qué descubrimiento médico quisieras hacer tú? Pues lo tengo muy claro, la solución al problema del SIDA y del cáncer. Enfermedades que, que nos afectan gravemente a la, a la sociedad nuestra, del mundo. Well, I'm very clear on that. I'd like to find the solution to cancer and AIDS, which are very serious problems affecting our society. You're also a model, so you know clothing. What's more important, 
the front of the dress or the back? And could you just turn around for us? Just... Tú eres modelo. Ok. That's, that's... Así que te queremos preguntar, ¿qué parte del vestido consideras más importante? ¿El frente o la parte de atrás? Y volteate. El frente. Hay que mirar a la gente de frente, no por la parte de atrás. The front. You have to look at people face on and not from behind. Thank you. Spain. One of your proudest achievements was standing up to one of your professors back in college. Now, what have you stood up for recently? When I fell on the stage last Friday, <laughs> I believe that I have stood up for the rest of the women who have fallen, whether on or off stage. I believe that through this example of mine, I have shown courage and strength of being a woman, of being who I am. And I hope to be a good example to the rest of the women in the world. Thank you. Thank you. Philippines. She has a lot of class, a lot of poise, I think. I love her, but Julie, I have to say, she is working that fallen on the stage for dress rehearsal. <laughs> I'm telling you, next year everybody's going to be falling. I think it was what? traumatic for her, and she got a real boost from the crowd. She got it again tonight, so obviously right. it's working for her. I love her, though. I let love me, her from the very beginning. Let me ask you this. The women, are they focusing and obsessing on how they look right now, or are they in another zone? You know what? At this portion of the competition, they might run in front of a mirror and check themselves, but really they're focusing on what's coming up next, their question and answer. They have prepared for ever physically yeah. for this now it's a whole it's a mental competition but I think. you know i have to say beauty and no brains ain't gonna work here it's not gonna work because you're right. you know these you're ladies right. have to represent the world of course and i think this is an extremely important part of the competition and beauty alone just doesn't cut it so. it doesn't cut the mustard does it okay <laughs> but when we come back the final three delegates we're gonna find out <laughs> Welcome back to the Miss Universe pageant on CBS where it's time for three very special awards and each winner will receive a beautiful commemorative Hoya Crystal Trophy. First, the Clairol Herbal Essence Style Award. Now this goes to the delegate with the best overall presentation of personal style with an emphasis on healthy hair. And the winner of the Clairol Herbal Essence Style Award is Philippines. The next award goes to the delegates selected by the public on the internet and the press photographers as the most photogenic. The winner of the most photogenic title is Puerto Rico. The Congeniality Award is the one voted on by the delegates themselves and goes to the one delegate who inspired all the others with her energy, spirit, and kindness. This year's Congeniality Award goes to Portugal!
congratulations to all of you. Now we want to take a moment to thank a few wonderful people who made all of this possible. His Excellency Arthur N. R. Robinson, President of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. The Honorable Basio Pande, Prime Minister of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. The Honorable Mervyn I. Assam, Minister of Trade and Industry and Consumer Affairs and Minister of Tourism. Carlos L. R. John, Executive Chairman, Trinidad and Tobago Host Committee. And one more thanks to the co-owner, along with CBS of the Miss Universe organization, Mr. Donald Trump. All right, sports fans, Yogi Berra always said it is not over till That's it's right. over. Of course, he wasn't playing cricket, where the game calls for a lot of overs. But it is over for two more delegates, yeah. and we're about to make the cut to the final three. And if you've been following, you should have a pretty good idea. And here are my choices. Oh, I wonder, what'd you say? Spain, Venezuela, and Philippines. All right, here are my choices. Ah, ah, we've got, we picked the same three. All right, great. We're good. Great for now. Think alike. <laughs> All right, let's go down the track and see if we're right. In my hand are the names of three delegates who still have a chance to be crowned Miss Universe 99. In random order. to decide which woman deserves to be Miss Universe. Each will be asked the same question. So to make it fair, I'm going to ask Philippines and Botswana to please go over to the listening booth over there, please. We're going to put headphones on you, so to make sure that you can't hear the question. Would you come with me, please, Spain? Okay. Can you hear me? All right. Spain, here is your question. If Miss Universe were to become pregnant during a rain, should she be allowed to continue as Miss Universe? Si Miss Universo quedara encinta durante su reinado, se le debería de permitir que siguiera de Miss Universo. Yo creo que sí, no tendría por qué ningún problema. Su cabeza sigue estando aquí, ¿no? Aunque tenga eh, un nacimiento por, por traer al mundo. Siempre y cuando no le dificulte sus facultades, pues para para viajar, pero de momento no encuentro solución. I don't see why not, because her head would still be the same. The only difference is that she would be bringing someone into the world. The only thing is, if it were to, uh, in some way, keep her from her travels, well. Thank you very much, Spain. Stay right there. Philippines. If, if Miss Universe were to become pregnant during her reign, should she be allowed to continue as Miss Universe? That's a very difficult uh, situation to be in. And um, I believe that the Miss Universe, if ever she becomes pregnant, I believe that she should continue with her reign if she has been a good example to be a Miss Universe. She has pursued all the all the goals that she has she had in the first place, and I believe that she should continue. Thank you, Philippines. Paswana. Your question is. If Miss Universe were to become pregnant during her reign, should she be allowed to continue as Miss Universe? Personally, I think Miss Universe 
is a symbol of a woman as well. She's celebrating her femininity. And I believe that, thank you. And I believe that if she should fall pregnant, it will not in any way interrupt her duties. I believe that as a woman, she should celebrate her femininity. Thank you. That's fine. Ladies, one big smile. The judges' final view. Once again, our three finalists. Spain. I love Spain from the beginning. She's beautiful. She's smart. She answered that question. She did, but she confidence. paused and she said, "Well, I think she might have taken the easy way out by not finishing her answer. I'm not sure, though." You're right. You know what? You're right about that. It's a shame, really. Exactly. She definitely choked. Botswana. Well, the crowd loves this girl. Listen to the crowd, and there you have it. You know, if it goes on the question alone, this girl's got it. Right, but there are other things that are involved. There's but man, she told it like it was. Exactly. She, she was very and honest and direct. You know, the judges will consider all questions of competition. We'll be back to crown Miss Universe. Don't you move a muscle.